Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Danny Jones here from the Goose Hummock Shops. Um, we're going to talk a little bit of, today about trout fishing. Now, I've been a fisherman for pretty much all of my life. I've caught tuna fish up to 900 pounds, striped bass, bluefish, but my true passion is uh, freshwater trout fishing. And here on the Cape Cod, there's uh, quite a few different places that you can go to. Um, here on the Cape, there's over 360 ponds. They're all big kettle hole ponds. Um, probably 50% of them are stocked with trout, both spring and fall. If you need a list of the stock or the ponds that are stocked, you can always go to the Mass Fish Hunt website and they do change the stocking list on a weekly basis. They usually stock heavily in the spring, right up until Memorial Day, and then they start again in October. Um, some of the different applications that I use for fishing for trout, there's numerous things that you can do. You can cast, you can cast with lures, um, you can cast with stick baits, uh, you can troll in a boat, troll in a kayak. You can also just basically fish from shore as well. You can just fish with uh, bait on the bottom, shiners, uh, fish with bobbers. There's quite a few different techniques that you can use. Um, we're going to get into that a little bit afterwards with the question and answer part of this. Um, I'm trying to think what else I had to speak to you about here. Uh, some of the best times that I go fishing are usually early, early in the morning, literally in the dark before the sun comes up. I like to get there, get a good spot before the crowds arrive, or later in the evening, especially after work. The sun's going down. Once again, there's less people there, less pressure on the ponds. It's a little bit darker, and the fish are not as, uh, as skittish. They're, they're feeding more early in the morning, later in the evening. We're going to discuss some of the uh, different equipment that I use personally. Um, you don't need anything really heavy for trout fishing, obviously. You're not saltwater fishing for big stripers. This is freshwater fishing. So I do personally like a lot of the St. Croix Trout Series rods. Um, they have them both 5'6", 6', 6', 6', 6', 6' different lens for different uh, size lures. Um, this one here is one of the St. Croix Trout Series here that I use. Um, I have this rigged with a Shimano uh, uh, CI4 1000, a smaller reel, and I also have it loaded with 15 pound test braided line. A lot of people like monofilament line. I prefer the braided line, a little bit thinner diameter, but stronger than the monofilament. Um, this is another St. Croix rod I have here, a little bit shorter. Um, I like the shorter rods too because a lot of times here in the Cape, the ponds, you have high water levels in the spring, so you need to be in your waders or chest high, so you're literally wading the edges of the ponds and you're in the brush, in the trees, so a shorter rod for me is easier to cast into the open water. All right, so typically um, I do fish a lot. A very close friend of mine in his boat, Captain Rich Haight, we do a lot of trolling, especially in the Nickerson State Park area, you know, Little Cliff, Big Cliff. Um, and you can do different things with different lures. You can troll them and you can also cast them from shore. As you can see on this rod here, this is a uh, 3DS minnow. So you can slow troll this in the boat, just bumping around the pond, you know, follow the contour line of the pond. You can also cast this from shore as well. Uh, this lure here tends to glow in the dark at night as well. So I like to cast this early morning or later in the evening. Um, this is also a suspending stick bait. So if you stop trolling or casting, it doesn't float, it doesn't sink, it suspends, it just hangs there. So you have a very slow retrieve with this can be very effective on some big fish. Now on sunny days, personally, I like to cast shinier lures. Colorado Spoons, this is a copper gold pattern here. Uh, some of the Thomas uh, Buoyants are shiny as well. Also Al's Goldfish, this is another killer lure here. Once again, you can cast these from shore or you can troll them from the boat. MEP spinners. Now the MEP spinners have been around forever. I've been fishing for a long, long time. Some of these MEP spinners can be very, very effective as well, especially trolling in a boat. It's easy. All you have to do is really cast out, put the boat in gear, and troll around the pond and just wait for a strike. Some of these just have a little bit bigger blades. You get a little bit more depth in the water if the fish are a little bit deeper as well. Some of these other lures here, some of the natural baits that are in some of these kettle hole ponds or like kill, killifish is one of them. There's natural gold shiners, there's regular shiners. This killifish, these, this pattern mimics them to a T. They're, if sometimes if you're wading the shoreline, you'll see massive schools of these swimming around the ponds. So any lure that looks like a killifish with these little stripes or a little striped uh, yellow perch lure can be very effective on the trout as well. If you're gonna fish from shore, one of the easiest way to catch trout Personally, I don't use it very often, but a lot of guys will fish with the power bait. They'll fish this with a sliding egg sinker. So the egg sinker will sit on the bottom and the flower, uh, power bait floats up here about 18 to 20 inches. Uh, that can be very effective, especially with the rainbow trout when they're freshly stocked. 
Um, also, if you are going to be fishing from shore, you can also use the old standby night crawler worm that you used to get when you were kids. But when I, when I, years ago, a friend of mine showed me a method to fish the worms that sounds kind of crazy, but it actually works very well. This little plastic container here is just a worm blower. There's nothing in there, it's just air. You unscrew the top, there's a little needle. So when you hook this onto your hook, you're just gonna hook it once or twice, insert the needle into the worm and inject air into it. So this will actually float off the bottom as well, which can be very effective for trout, especially big browns, brook trout, just about any species of trout. My go-to bait, if I'm looking for big fish, I did get a big fish this past weekend um, on a shiner. Some of the shiners we have at the store are smaller than others. Sometimes we get bigger baits. Typically, I tend to order like a heavy medium. But these shiners, they're just minnows, just a little minnow. You can hook them a few different ways. We're going to show you that afterwards or in a question and answer uh, part of this. Um, you can fish them under a bobber. The bobber goes under, you got a bite. They're pretty simplistic. You can also fish them on the bottom. And I use a strike indicator on my line to uh, let you know if you have a, a strike one way or another. If the bobber goes up or down, usually the fish is coming towards you or he's taking the bait away where I'll pick up the rod and simply set the hook and reel in the fish. All right, getting back to the shiner method for fishing. Now, I like to use little circle hooks like this. You don't need anything really too big. Um, the, the trout will tend to shy away from it. So you want it like a smaller. This is a size, size two here, Gimagatsu octopus hook. So what I'll do, you can do it a few different ways. Oops, hold on, you gotta catch them first. You can simply just hook them through the back right here, just under the dorsal fin, right there. You don't wanna go in too deep because you don't wanna poke him into the belly, into his guts, and because you'll, you'll kill the fish. Another way you can also hook them is through the lips, just like this, and the fish can sit, swim freely like that. A very natural presentation so that can be very effective for the bigger fish now once again now if I'm fishing from shore usually I typically have a couple rod holders just to put my rods into you don't want to hold on to the rod I feel as if the fish can sense that you're holding on to it so I'll put the rod in a rod holder I don't have one with me here today then I'll attach a strike indicator this is just a, a float with a paper clip on it that's all it is you just hook it onto your line a couple guides up and you're gonna pull it down so it hangs right about there so, if, now these are great at night too because they glow in the dark and you can also see them. So if you do get a bite, the line will simply go up. Or if the fish is coming towards you, that bobber is going to go down like that. So when I see that happening, I'll extract the fish strike indicator, pick up the rod, and then if the line is going out, simply set the hook. Easy. All right, on this section of our little film here, we're going to do a little uh, question and answers. Uh, Jake's going to answer ask me some questions and I'm going to answer them to the uh, best of my abilities here. What are some of the best places to go for beginners? Some of the best places to go for beginners, if you really want to get them out fishing, is just go to find some of the ponds that are sto stocked locally, like Nickerson State Park, Sheep's Pond, go to the boat ramp so it's easy access so you can just fish from the beach. You know, teach the kids how to cast, how to use a bobber, which can be very effective. And even let them try with the power bait because it's very easy. You put it on the hook with a little small sinker, cast it out, let it sit on the bottom. It's probably the best thing to do is just look for open area with, a, with not a lot of uh, brush or trees behind you because you don't want the kids getting snagged up in the trees. Some of the best lures to cast? Uh, some of my favorite personal lures to cast are baker's lures. We've carried them here at the Goose now for about seven years. Um, that's when I first started fishing them. Like I said, some of these killifish patterns... This is one of my favorites here. It's kind of like a brownish gold pattern. Kind of looks like a golden shiner that I was speaking about earlier. This is one here is also kind of cool. Nice little green pattern. Orange belly. Very effective as well. This is Sabeel. This is a Sabeel stick shad. It has a, like, a little bit of colored dye in there that looks like blood. But I've caught some massive brown trout on this lure as well. Especially in the colder months in December, January. And then the other one I, I like quite a bit is the Yozuri 3DS Minnow. This has more of a wobbling action, but once again, it's a suspending stick bait. So when you stop reeling, it just sits there. doesn't float, doesn't sink. What is something you can do to stop gut hooking trout? One of the best things to do, that's why, like I said, I, I kind of frown on the power bait, especially with the rainbows, because they tend to swallow as soon as they get it. So what I will try, try to do is set the hook quicker. 
as soon as I see that strike indicator starting to move, don't let him take line for five minutes because he's going to swim with it. He's going to swallow that. As soon as I see the bite, I take off the indicator and I set the hook, trying to hook them in the lips as best as you can so they don't get gut hooked. How should you handle these trout once they're on the bank? I usually catch and release 99.5% of my fish. And what I found that whenever you handle these fish, if you grab these trout or touch them repeatedly with your hands, they don't like that. So the best thing to do is I always have a pair of needle nose pliers on me. I, I always have my hip boots or chest ties, so I stay in the water. I try to just lift up the fish enough out of the water to see the hook in their mouth and extract it with the needle nose pliers. If the fish is a little lethargic and he wants to belly up because he's tired, I will actually kind of swim them a little bit, try to swim them. We also do sell here at the Goose some nets that have like a rubber coating instead of like your standard net they used to see years ago. These nets are very, very nice and they're gentle on the fish. So you can actually keep them in there, let them revive himself, then turn them loose. All right, Danny Jones here, kind of wrapping it up here towards the end of the day. Just want to remind everybody, get out there and do some trout fishing. It's not that hard to do. And what, what's going on in this crazy world, it's a great opportunity to get some fresh air, catch some trout, and also make sure you check into our what's that? YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel uh, that Jake's been taking care of, and he's been doing a great job at it. You'll get a lot of information there. You'll see some great videos. Have a great afternoon, everyone.